year. Year. It's good. Short, short year today. Short year. Short year energy. Literally. What's good? John, I have uh, the day off today, which is, is quite nice for like finish. Basically finished with like a project and we've just been like in hustle mode. And mm-hmm. now that things are calming down a bit, they gave us a day off, which was really, really nice. And yeah, it's far needed. So yeah, just making the most of the day visiting family. So. How about you? What's good? Don't have the day off. Just uh, utilizing remote work to take a little break from work to do this. We didn't get it done last night because we were both pretty cooked. So it's good. Yeah, we have some some items on the docket. I uh, I guess before that, enjoying the apartment, slowly furnishing it more and more. Riley came over last night. Oh, really? Hung out. Yeah. How's he doing? We got dinner. It's chilling. Um, we yeah, there's, this, together there's this guy on, on YouTube that looks like exactly like Riley. Or like reminds me just exactly Riley. I was yeah. like, it's, it's like cook guy. Yeah. Or send it to me. Let's How's he doing? Chilling. He's good. We had a nice chat. Uh, hung out maybe for like two, two and a half hours. Came over to the crib. Um, yeah, still waiting on, not waiting, but, you know, getting things sort of gradually, but it is starting to feel, you got to come over. Um, I know. I know. It's different. It's in a different state than when you last came over. Sure. Uh, are you going to be in Westchester tomorrow? Tom- probably tomorrow. And then I'll definitely be back Sunday. And I might even take, I'm definitely taking Monday. I might even take Tuesday off. Um, okay. So down and chill. All right, cool. That's good. Um, yeah i mean things are good the weather is starting to be not as crazily hot so uh how's your last week been man good good it's uh i feel like finally getting back into normal routine and like i feel like coming back from the trip brought back some good habits and some changes and um yeah i just feel like you know i felt yeah just in, in, a, in a good place so uh yeah how about it's you good. yeah it's been it's also been good fortunately um i'm really enjoying the space uh like the physical space of my apartment and what that's done to me psychologically has been really beneficial i feel also like slipping into a good groove of routine and habits and it's cool to have a lot of friends that live nearby sure. i'm i'm really down for that and uh there's mad good food in the area we went to this restaurant the other day called pomp and circumstance have you been yeah, there? yeah. i told you about it did you i, I definitely told i because marissa like knew about it before it even like opened and we went like okay I think it was like the first week it opened Okay. But there, did you get the pitas? Yeah, elite. So you yeah. should, uh, you know about their happy hour deal? Uh, so, no. It's like you okay. get a falafel or something. No, for $16, you get a drink and a pita with a dip. So I think that's a fire deal because the pitas are huge and mad tasty and their dips yeah. are dope. So you I mean, should that's come the price through. of a drink in the city. Like, yeah, so it's a great deal. Free dipping, yeah. So you should come through um, for happy hour. Yeah. Um, Solid the thing spot. about the apartment, uh, I think it's interesting is like, if if someone said to you like, what is the monetary value you'd place on having your own place? What would you put it? I feel like it's tough to quantify because like you initially like probably wouldn't say it's that high of value, but once you're experiencing it, it's like much higher than you would you'd place for something. Yeah, I don't know how I would quantify it. I think. I think the rule that they say of like 30% of your, I've heard both pre-tax and post-tax. So, you know, that number, which is, you know, is a big difference, but I take post-tax, I think up to 30%. Like I'm not I saying would, like, I'm just saying what's the like value utility that it's providing? Like, do you think you're getting more or less than what you're paying for your, more. for me, more. I feel like it's like way more, but then also I'm way like, more. I wouldn't want to pay this like, I don't know. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, pay I more. think like I wouldn't want to pay for the utility, but I feel like the utility is way more than. What you're paying. I mean, the thing is, you, what is the alternative? Living with parents, like what sure, is? I the mean, whatever. Just like living a bunch of like bunch of roommates, like 
whatever half no. half rent. Like, yeah, I don't think I could live with friends again, unless it was like a situation where we had like a mansion, you know? Sure. And like, really could not get in each other just way. Like, sure. yeah, I think even like a New York two bedroom, I wouldn't want to yeah. do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, the utility is is like no one is bugging you for your time and you're able to live completely you want. as you see fit which is you know which is scrolling having, twitter and it's whatever i was having this conversation with riley last night um about how you can be really good friends with someone and not like living with them even if they don't do anything that's like that like sure. they could be on top of dishes you know not make a lot of noise but it's just like damn like you know if i want to play thing certain music someone exactly like if i want to play sure. certain music if they don't like the fucking music and even if they don't say anything if i happen to know they don't like the music i'm gonna be like fuck i don't really want to play this you know like sure, those kinds sure. of things to wear clothes like all this shit yeah like yeah dude so that alone I, is great. <laughs> yeah just yeah um i very much although you know some of the most fun times have been living like us at fishbowl or sure, sure. brickle but yeah those are like yeah, those are those are I mean, times it's, past. I, I I think they're just like they just optimize for very different things. Like I would have yeah. like when I was in Mexico, like it was I don't know, I had a, I had a great time. Right, like, but right. I think like, it's because it it's like, like a month. You know, you're yeah, it's not yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely like venture think around it. Base state is like spot like solo spot. solo. But I don't know, like reading nice. this book, Dawn of Everything, like talks a lot about like what's like humans natural state and like i feel like i don't know it's just talking it, it, one of the examples he gave was that like back in the day when there was like native americans and people like moving out west and there was a lot of these like conflicts like anytime like someone from like a tribe was integrated into society they like hated it and at any chance they get they would want it to go to go back but then the reverse of where like I mean, there were obviously like, many horrible things that happened on both ends, but like in positive cases where like someone from the West was captured or whatever, taken in by uh, a tribe, like they loved it. And when they like went to go bring them back, the people like hated it and they wanted to go back to the tribe life. And I feel like, I don't know. I, I, I think the closest we've experienced that is like at Fishbowl and like, like, I don't know. I definitely think that'd be, it's would be great for adults to have like that type of living arrangement like even yeah. if honestly just like a bunch of us in the same building would be i think the yeah. building would be optimal like That'd if be we all lived in the same building or within like a five minute walk of each other close like i think i think like like what's the, the equation for gravity where it's like it's exponential drop off with this yeah, yeah, yeah i think it's the same thing applies yeah and i think like being in the same building would be not marissa's uh, one of Marissa's friends, they all like it was like some friends lived together, and then it was like the whole building was was friends, and like it seemed to. And I feel like we should yeah. we should try to finesse that. Like I would I would be down if you're spot. down to stay in New York. Yeah, yeah. like where like just get a big we live in the same building. Yeah, even if we have like me, you, maybe pay, I don't know. Just go like I feel like at least three people four people like obviously two would be dope but like three four five would feel like really really cool i would love that right. yeah dude i i used to always think like in college i wish there was a way there is a way but i wish the way in college how across the street your friends next door is your friends upstairs your friends like right. walk on the street your friends it would be interesting if it wasn't logistically challenging to organize that kind of thing with your friends like afterwards sure. you know sure. uh, i think i would i would take that pretty seriously like let's find a building or I would a neighborhood that. that'd be so much fun like like yeah Jay i don't want to he was living yeah. like everyone has built like his cousin he like everyone became friends in the building and like when i was there it was like everyone was hanging out like yeah it was just such a good like quality yeah. of life just like skyrocketed it. when i was living abroad i was not it, I was living in this building that was like kind of a dorm and kind of wasn't like the university owned a bunch of apartments in the building, but non-university students could live there too. But I remember like all the friends I made every night, it was like, let's do dinner together. 
and I don't need to see anything. you all day. Like I don't need to see you right. all day, but then like let's get let's watch a movie, let's watch a TV right. show, like right. or like let's and go to walk is, together. You don't have to see this person like every day, but yeah. like just by nature, like you'll probably see another person on average like two to four times a week, which is just yeah. dope. Like even if they don't come in every event, you're not going to every event, like you will line up enough times where you yeah. see them multiple times a week. Like, Dude, the area Marissa lives in now would be fire. Um, or honestly, dude, Long Island City is a lock. I mean, honestly, if we went anywhere and just had a squat, like it would yeah. become a lot of fun. And and like I think you naturally like. Yeah, would Pedro attract. wouldn't do it though. Pedro wants to live in the Upper East Side only, and I'm like I'm not trying to be there. Yeah. Uh, but I think just like, like having you, it, it would attract more people. Maybe we convince J.K. Sure. Yeah, like Henry. Whoever. That'd be sick. Like Henry's not. Henry is like a. I feel like he don't know what he's doing next week. He doesn't know what he's doing in ten minutes. Yeah, he just like. What I, I guess I guess he knows what he's doing tomorrow. Though. I guess. Okay. Happy birthday to Henry! Shout out. Sure, sure. Shout out to the whoever's player. gonna listen to this. Um. But yeah, I think that would be. I don't know. It's just wild that that's not more of a thing. Did you Dude, hear about I, this guy? Have you have you heard about this guy? He bought this big plot of, plot of land in Waco, Texas. Big plot of land, put up five houses, like around this little, like tiny, like pond lake thing. Put these nice looking homes up and just Airbnbs them all out. And he makes like nets from these five houses. I think he put like 1.3 in something like that. He nets after fees, everything like 500 K a year. And like, I mean, I imagine you could do that just like not Airbnb and just like, live with your friends plot of land with your school yeah like yeah dude i mean the thing is i think we kind of touched on this last week when the narrative or just the expected thing to be doing in life solves for logistics it's way easier than trying to like derive that situation so what or like engineer that situation what do i mean you go to college everyone's like yeah 18 to 22 go to college the living situation is just a side effect of like being in college, but sure. then post college. But actually, but it is kind of one of the reasons people go to college without even like sure. acknowledging it. Really, for but sure. Yeah, I agree. It's the but it, it it's like an assumption that's baked into it that we like, you know. Sure. And it's like what we're getting out of it is living with people our age and having fun. But I think like now, like it would be, you know, with uh, you know, like the Metca Metcalf's law. How like the network mm -hmm. effect, the network. blah blah blah, yeah. and you've seen like just a visualization of it. It's like the number of connections goes up for every new injected node. Yeah. I think that as an example of how logistically challenging it would be for a whole group of friends to agree to live in one building or one neighborhood, I think it becomes more complex or more logistically difficult the greater number of people you have. So sure, like me sure. and you, we can be like, yo, let's live in this building, but then you have Pedro who's like. I only want to live on the Upper East Side. Now it's either we decide to live on the Upper East Side or he's not going to be part of that. Sure. You know? And then it's like... But then I think if... But I think also fighting against that too is like once you have... Like if you have... Let's say... Let's say like... Me, you, Riley, Carson, whatever. And like, like if we already have five people there, if someone new is coming to the neighborhood yeah, or someone's moving, like, like it's also a gravity effect. Like, oh, this would be yeah. sick to move in. So I think it's like the flywheel like effect goes in both directions but uh yeah i agree it's it's definitely there's a lot of friction to get it yeah there. but i think it's such a thing to like you know when, when everyone's in high school or middle school everyone says like yo when we get older let's all live near each other or like yo sure. let's let's pool our money like the boys and buy a fucking but that's what you do as a kid you're living together naturally. yeah like, you know what i'm saying exactly. so i think it's i take that like if you're down i take that so seriously because i really do think like you talked about the the gravity the inverse uh inverse law um sort of dynamic of distance i think of it as like basically logistically zero one like what is a situation where it's going to be so like easy to see this person that i'm not going to be like oh fuck i don't want to go you know like sure. it's raining i don't want to go like same building no factor you know it. across exactly. the street no factor you know two blocks away honestly no but factor. it does it does it does like i'm telling you like it, I know, we, we're, we're planning on talking about like simplicity or perfection and everything but like yeah. even like i bought one of those iron gyms right just to like have access to doing like 
decent yeah. quality workout. You end up doing so much right. more just because it's right you there. Up, but the thing is, like, if it was permanently installed, I would do probably double what I do now. Yeah. And that's just, like, the fact that I have to go over, like, hook yeah. it in, whatever. Like, yeah. and that, like, but even then, like, that yeah. over the step of a, over going to the gym is, like, I'll do yeah. twice as much. So it's, like, yeah. every, like, optimization to remove some yeah. friction is, like, huge. So For I sure. agree. I think it would be, it would be dope. Um, yeah. And I do the, think, I mean, some people naturally have it, right? Like everyone is from, let's say the Midwest, West coast, they come to New York, live with like three, four roommates, right? Like rent's wild expensive. Mm -hmm. And like, naturally you have like a mini, you know, frat house or whatever equivalent. Like a lot of my friends, we didn't really have that. Like, cause we don't, yeah. you know. I mean, a lot of my friends live in the East village and I think that could be a fireplace to live. Although it gets loud, but you have to find a nice street. that's like not too loud. Sure. Sure. Um, but I have like four close friends who now live in the East Village and they all live close to each other and they're like in the sure. friend group. Sure. Um, sure. I wouldn't want to do that sort of thing in Brooklyn unless it was like we're in our 30s and we're like in Clinton Hill or like Fort Green type shit. Sure. That would be fire. But yeah, be fire. 20s, it like, is, it's tough. East to Village sounds fire. like some people have relationships and they want to like live with their yeah. significant other. Other people, it's like different, like economic can afford practice, certain rent exactly yeah. exactly so there's like a lot of factors in play but i think yeah like if enough is there like people will make it work and like, me and you should definitely do it like yeah, be fire. maybe next year two years whatever i right. think our, our leases are around the same time expiring like mine will be july yeah like a month or two I probably, yours is june i think yeah um, probably a month or something i don't know we'll talk about it yeah while, maybe fire we'll like find a fucking cool. just find a building yeah. and just mob well we should we should try to recruit like a bunch of head i'm trying to think who could we recruit i don't think pedro would be down but i can well, ask him but i'm confident got he, he wouldn't be down months or whatever to, to i know but i'm we'll... this is fun to talk about though yeah. um, who else brando zero percent he won't leave brooklyn sean I wonder, won't leave brooklyn i wonder what at this podcast i was listening to uh my first million that i like i don't know i think it's probably my favorite podcast right now yeah um, this guy was talking about like has he met like when he went to twitch his company got bought by twitch and he's like did you meet exceptional people there and he was like most people are like fine but he's like there are a few people that were like elite and his ceo is like elite and he was like mm -hmm. this guy was an idea machine one of his ideas which is like fire is like a gym like a gamified gym like you join and you have to wear like a certain level clothes like you can only do certain workouts and like once you like hit a certain level of like strength or whatever like whatever it is then you can level up and you get like new gear new access to different parts of the gym new equipment and like just completely like call of duty gamifying or like mm -hmm. world of Warcraft, whatever gamifying like the gym like that would like if done well that would be a leap for most people to work out i don't like, think i would like that uh, it's not for, for everyone, me but i'm telling you yeah. like the average person yeah like i think or someone who likes to play be, video games like yeah i think it could be fire for introducing a an incentive structure for people who are getting into working out or right. honestly like if you've fallen out of the habit it's a good pipeline to getting back into the habit like sure enter this gym with four friends you have a comp like a competitive goal or just like your xp is displayed or whatever but then it's it, it, i think there's a way to do it where it could yeah like you said if done well it could be fire like it could just be but yeah yeah but i wonder if there's like some I don't know, way to incentivize things that like a company or something where you can have these like living communities. Like, I mean, that's what Balaji talks I mean, it's about, like we, right? Yeah. So Balaji talks about in the network state is like people are going to start his hypothesis and prediction is people will sort of continue to trend right now of how people are sort of, you know, organizing online sort of organically around certain topics, ideas, interests, and forming right. digital communities. And it makes sense to predict that, you know, one of the logical steps will be sort of uh, telling everyone in the community, hey, let's all try to live in this area. You know, it'll start off as like, yo, let's have like an offsite. Everyone come together and hang out. Um, but, you know, like Google, for example, owns a bunch of apartments that, you yep. know, their employees live in that is like, you know, yep. you know, uh, within some radius of the campus. The campus, yeah. And uh, you don't have to live there, but it's probably subsidized a little bit if you're a Google employee, blah, blah, blah. It's probably like, yeah, just like affordable, like relatively affordable and like, yeah. yeah. I think it would be fire. 
I'm down to do this. We could talk offline about it more seriously. Um, I think you're, we're already kind of seeing it though. Like I think like you'll see like crypto, crypto kind of found its home in Miami, and like yeah, people that are getting in the space like move down there, VCs and different yeah. investors, different builders. Like so, I feel like yeah, it's already starting to kind of happen. But I think even yeah, yeah like on a more localized level would be. Yo, we got to recruit Tomas. Sure, Tomas. I you feel might like... live in Europe. You might live in Europe for a bit, but. Yeah, what's good with him? I haven't seen him in so long. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we went to the the beach the other day. So, when did you go? Oh, at uh, Long Last Beach? weekend, yeah, Long Dance Beach. Dance Yeah, a lot of fun. So he's considering um, moving to Europe? This is a whole what-if situation, but yeah, um, facts. he's definitely going to be living there for at least a month, which is cool. When? So, uh, I think in a few months. All right. Is he in town right now? So why don't we fucking, we should do drinks next week. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to write this on my to-do list. Do it. Um, but yeah, community, much needed, very dope. We had some things to chat about here. Let's see. Um, Bro, Marissa's building would be fire, or a building like it yeah, because of how it's much just bread. But yeah, it's bread, but and it's also like out of the way. But how much uh, public space there is for like barbecues and shit, and it's a pretty good gym in it too. Sure, I mean that was like, do you remember that building, View Thirty Four, where like everyone and their mother lives? Like it was like a big frat house. It was like a big suite, basically. Like there's probably some nicer, like Lower East Side, West Side buildings that we could find that like spot up. Yeah, how easy do you think it would be to be like finding, you know, two to five apartments in the same building at the same time? Certain ones, ones that are that big, probably not that difficult. Because I mean, they have like a few hundred units, so I mean, it's just like right, it'll just open up. Like, yeah, I mean, it just depends on the unit size. But I feel like one bedroom, you know, studios is pretty pretty doable. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll 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 let that marinate. Facts. Which be really fun. Which, which, uh, which of these topics are piquing your interest that we have written down? Mm. Tamar and I have, have trying to be a little, a little more uh, prepared. Yeah, go off of a tornado cash. Talk about that. Tornado cash. So, <clears throat> but like feature slash bug of crypto is that everything is traceable, right? Like, if I send you money, you send whatever heat money whatever like we have this trail of how this money moved around right and we know if we know you own this wallet you own this wallet you own this wallet we know that you guys were transacting right yeah tornado cash is a way for that to be broken while still operating in the system and how so it works it's a protocol is, to enforce more privacy so how it works is a smart contract and you say hey i want to send money to say more but you send it to this smart contract or multiple people from my understanding is multiple people will send money to the smart contract and then like the money goes out to these other addresses but you don't know who sent the money to that contract so basically introduce right. it's like a, a in a vpn in a way where like it adds this middle node so that you don't know where exactly uh the money is coming from or going to or you know where it's coming from but you don't know who sent it to that person um but yeah, so the government is obviously not a fan of this. They want to track money. There's money laundering the whole line. This kind of like, yeah. it's a, I think it's called like a cash wash or something like that. It helps, yeah, de-identify how money is moving. So they were like cracking down and like closing accounts that were, or like locking accounts that were associated with, uh, tornado cash? with this, with tornado cash. So to counteract it, someone just started sending ETH to like ma major wallets, like, uh, I think like Vitalik's wallet to like Shaq's wallet to like major celebrities and like big accounts. They just started sending money through Tornado Cash to it, so they would have to like lock these big accounts. So it just like it was a big like fu to the system. Um, but yeah, and okay. there's this whole interesting concept. Last quick thing is there's a whole interesting concept around, and Nassim talked about this like how <clears throat> crypto can be non-fungible 
because you can have some money that's like you know is dirty money and other money that you yeah. know is clean money whereas like regular money is just fungible it's just money right so um yeah that is the okay so i thought you were gonna say this because i retweeted this earlier uh the developer who created tornado cash was arrested mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that for, also happened yeah for the i would assume um creating this code that could be used in such a sure. government unfriendly way but then it enters this conversation of like or enters this point of like is he really responsible like oh. if we build whatever is like smith and wesson responsible for the death of someone if they built the gun like you know it, it, it enters this weird conversation yeah, of, this of, philosophical of, debate is exactly what is your take on that i mean i think honestly it's i think it's just like a powerful tool right you have something where you can track the flow of things and this kind of breaks that which i think in certain cases is effective and good like I don't know. Let's say like you wanted to build a system for like donating money and you want to do like an anonymous donation. And obviously this is like a fairly niche case, but yeah, this allows that. Right. And like it allows for if someone's like buying into position, but they don't want like the public to know they can do this. Like many people like Warren Buffett will buy stock in a company through these like other brokerage firms he has like multiple brokerage firms. They don't, so no one knows exactly what he's doing. So I think it's a similar concept so i think there's like value for this i don't think it makes sense to arrest the guy but i do think crypto is obviously used in many shady ways at the current moment so like i don't know i think it's just a gray area in my take it's a tool people will figure out how to use it but i do think it opens the door for like yeah shady behavior yeah so for sure really a hard point but... it seems I don't know. I think it's it's probably effective for the government to arrest him to disincentivize the creation of that kind of technology. Um, but I wonder if there's a if this is also just incentivizing someone to just create it in a more anonymous way, where the technology is created and you can't trace it back. To, like Satoshi created the Bitcoin protocol, no one knows who the fuck he is. But I wonder if the NSA knows who he is. That's an interesting. There's, I'm sure people know. No, people There's know, people but it's not publicly sure. known. But if they wanted to prosecute him, could they, like, they, you know, NSA, whoever, government, do they have his identity? Sure. I don't know. I mean, they could probably prosecute him. Under similar logic, I'm sure someone could make a case that he should be prosecuted. Like, Satoshi should be, Satoshi should be, like, prosecuted. So I think it just gets into a really tricky area. Um, but the thing is, like, I read, the guy who created uh silk road mm -hmm. like he got prosecuted right and he actually did some shady sh like shady shit but like as soon as they closed down like silk road like five other butt up and like mm -hmm. you know it's, it's just one of those things like if something makes sense and it's going to exist people are just going to spin them up and like the right. fact that this is a smart contract i don't know i imagine it'll happen many more times so I, I, you know, it is it is an interesting problem. How would you separate complete sort of anonymity in some sort of payments protocol from people using that for you know illegal or nefarious uses? Sure, I I'm sure that there's someone with some idea about how to do it. I don't have an idea. Um, I think it's really. I don't know. It's it's. I mean, there's bigger issues like this. Like like there's this whole right. Like Facebook comes under prosecution, right, for like interfering with the election, right? Like where do you where do people fall on this this spectrum? Like, mm -hmm. and there's a whole like some people take responsibility, right? Like newspapers take responsibility, whereas like telephone companies don't take responsibility. So this is like very blurry line. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure there'll be ways to like enforce ways to build some it's a moving target and it's like whatever whack-a-mole but i i'm sure there's ways that can help prevent money laundering while still allowing the service mm -hmm. to exist but yeah maybe yeah what comes to mind is perhaps some sort of uh verification process not 
I don't know, but then it gets tricky, right? Like what I was thinking is like, you know, in Venmo, you'll say what the payment is for. Mm -hmm. Imagine if there's a more rigorous way of doing that where you can verify what the payment is for, but it's uh, still not traceable to identities, yeah. but like a transaction yeah. can have like a fungible, a non-fungible yeah. sort of identity. And, but then it's like, how do you, how do you quantify? Like I paid my barber, you know, like sure. how, how do you say haircut? How do you say, you know, um, have you heard of that? The zero knowledge proof? Yeah. That's exactly like you can prove something happened without knowing the details of it. So I'm sure you can say like, I can prove that this wasn't a shady transaction, mm -hmm. but you don't have to know who like right. it was to or from. So I'm sure there, there's definitely gonna be some clever, clever shit, but like- I've, And I think it's like, you can get really granular, like, you know, there will be a class of like, you know, like goods that can be maybe integrated with some identifiers into the system. Like, oh, I went grocery shopping, okay. We know that this grocery transaction happened at Whole Foods. Uh, we don't need to know who bought what. You know, that's like an sure. easy use case. And that, but then if it's like if I send money to someone, like how do you know it's for X reason versus Y reason? Sure. I don't know. Interesting. I think these things are very interesting. It's interest. You've read Snow Crash? No. Okay. Um, Snow Crash is really uh, considered. It's a Neil Stevenson sci-fi novel. I think one of his first novels, and it's considered in tech to be. I mean, Neil Stevenson in general just has uh, the status of being very sort of prophetic in the technologies he predicts through his science fiction novels. And that book, uh, that book basically, I think it was written either early 2000s or late 90s. It kind of combines, you know, what Balaji is talking about with, with uh, network states with like a vr metaverse kind of world and it's so interesting to see we're not there yet and may you know who knows what direction the future is going to take and might not go there but basically in that book there are uh, like these countries you know countries that are formed around certain like ideas or um sort of different types of identity rather than like where you were born with your ethnic you know Sure. Uh, history is our lineage and it's like people can join these different countries and the countries aren't like geographically like oh it could be like down the street like down the street for me is like a different country you know sure. and people live in those communities is that what you call queens these days facts i'd i'd queens is fire bro people are sleeping I, on queens they i really are like best food in new york maybe not for fine dining i mean definitely not for fine dining but like just if you're going out to grab a bite to eat and you're like you want to taste what everyone's mom cooking tastes like you yeah. go to queens like we told i remember we did the, the here martin's like, thing yeah 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 it's fire no facts yeah i uh did, did you have more on the different country down the street on this book yeah i mean i just think like we talked about on the one hand earlier how you can live with friends live in the same area how that kind of there's a longing for that kind of experience really throughout life i see this on roswell island because there's you know uh people in the neighborhood that i've known for for you know decades at this point who are just older and seeing they have the same squad like my dad for example has uh you know has had groups of friends where they would just go on walks and you know, like me and my boys, we just go on walks. Um, and I think it's interesting, like you do live in the same, you know, building or like same vicinity where it's like, there's no logistical uh, reason to not see each other if you guys are down and you just meet up, let's say like nine o'clock at night after you've done dinner and you finish working for the day, like sure. just go for a walk, you know? So on, on one hand, it's like, it's uh, interesting to think about like, you know, I think it'll become more logistically uh, easy or logistically easier to make decisions with friends like let's live in the same place and if we're aligned on the type of life we live or we make similar income or work in similar sectors or similar companies or blah 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 it'll be easy to do that i think the other thing is like yeah i mean i'm just trying to work out this idea of like privacy and payments and you know what is like the logical conclusion of that where like you know, I think one of the philosophies 
underlying crypto is this line from Nick Saba where he says trusted third parties are a security uh, hole. And it's like, yeah, is it is it feasible logistically and practically to live in a world where people can transact without the moderation of any trusted third party, whether that's a bank or government? I mean, I mean, it's yes, like, I mean, that's what crypto is trying to do. It exists, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it exists, but it hasn't had widespread adoption yet. Sure, um, sure. But a little bit because of legacy, a little bit because of security, you know, problems. It's like, you know, when you're not using a bank, you know, like there's no credit card dispute, you know, there's no like, oh, I didn't I know, actually I make that payment. Yep. It's fucking gone. You can't get it back. Sure. You know, I mean, people lose three hundred thousand dollars, fucking ape, whatever. Like, yeah, and it's just GG. Like, there's no yeah. bumpers. Like, and I think we'll see. Blogi talks about this, like about how there's like this concept of like unbundling and rebundling businesses, right? Like, I think we're gonna see a similar thing where it's like we go from like a state of no trust, like when the internet's created, or like state of openness to like a state of trusting a third party where like, you know, use Gmail, all these things. And then it's like, okay, we use crypto. And then it's like, okay, crypto is great. And like, fundamentally it works really well, but then like, great, we're going to have to add these safety layers on top of it. Mm -hmm. And like, I imagine we're just going to keep seeing these like in and out. And yeah, I mean, it's things. interesting how much like a uh, technological, how many smart people are working on these problems in crypto. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like that interesting. Wow. Yeah. There's a point that you said before that made me think of, tweet I saw the other day, but also just like general philosophy, which I would say came from work is like, so at work, we have this concept of like a blameless culture, basically. And like, if something goes wrong, it's not the person, it's the system in place, which I think is like the yeah. healthiest and like essential way of thinking about things. Like, yes, you can have people who are like incompetent. Yes, you can have people who were like, whatever, like malicious, right? But like, even that is a system like, okay, like we have to you you have to build like product like like steps for that, and I think it's just interesting because if you apply that mindset of okay, there's systems and people are going to act like people, and we have to build a, a system around that. I think it allows you, like you said, to build like to be able to predict things like moderately well. Like you said, this guy's like a prophet in certain ways, and, like predict things, and like and I think like if you know. If you have a good sense of how people act and like you can think in this system mindset, you can kind of predict how things will play out. And I think that's like a lot of what like Balaji does. He's like, okay, I'm thinking in the system and how people are gonna act. And like or mm -hmm. if are people like if you're thinking in that in that way, you can kind of predict at least at a higher rate, like obviously not perfectly or even close, but um yeah, I don't know. I just interesting thought, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I like that. Um, you saying that made me think about uh, what Nassim talks about in Skin of the Game, or one of the things he talks about is um, the ideal political system is one in which your political opponents, if they had power, they could run without things going wrong. Like, kind of like what you said, it's the system, not the person. Um, the systems should be result uh, should be robust. And in a sense, anti-fragile enough so that if, you know, like if a Republican, you know, for example, designs a system, it should be able to, you know, be run by a Democrat without the Republican being like, fuck, this is wrong, you know? Sure. And vice uh, versa. Vice versa. And it's interesting to think of things through that lens because right now um, we see that not being the case, you know, like. 100%. Um, yeah, it's interesting, like, like, you know something i've thought thought about who are the modern day political philosophers who are actually having influence on how politics are being you know formed and and, and i don't know the answer to that question i know they exist um and one thing that comes to mind is like we're running a country on you know a you know centuries old document which i don't think is a bad thing because i think it takes it's not enough to be it, yeah it's 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 not it's not enough to be like, oh, this is old. We should re renew it just because it's old. Because there is like a reason that it's stuck around for, you know, 300 plus whatever years. But at the same time, how do we, you know, it seems to me that there, like, you know, things that Elon says, like, 
there should be a political system where the laws are easy to understand, only a few sentences. It's uh, sure. easy. It, it takes, it's not too hard to like take a law out of the law, like to sure. it uh, has a time destroy to a law. Like, yeah. Right. Or like, like it I actually, think, it starts with like a ticking time bomb. Like, right. The, like, yeah. The law will go away unless re, re approved. Yeah. That. Which is a really interesting way to think about it. And I wonder in our, I mean, it seems like, look, if, if, you wear a tinfoil hat or just like the most pessimistic or cynical point of view um, or paranoid point of view. It seems like if two, 300 years from now, kids were reading textbooks and social studies about like, you know, the fall of an empire and sort of the seeds of revolution. And they were describing right now we're leading towards that time. I don't think that would be surprising. Maybe that's wrong, but to me, it doesn't seem like it would be surprising. And I wonder, like, if this country were to fall or not fall in like a military sense, but just you know, fragment um, sure. with different groups um, creating different you know sub countries or entities. I would want to go live where the scientists are. Like, I would want to go live where the engineers are. Like, the people who are talking sure. like us, but have thought about it perhaps way more like I would want to go where people are taking Nassim's ideas and, you know, building that into government, you know? Sure. One thing I really like that he says is that it's unethical for people who serve in government to then when they get out of government, make money off of the status that they gained. And he's very critical sure. of Obama. Like Obama writes a book become, you know, and then goes by as a $12 million, you know, estate in Martha's Vineyard when he didn't have that money going into it. And he's making sure. that money most off of like sponsorships and, and, deals and stuff. Yeah. Um, like he gets paid by That's, Spotify, by advertisers to create his, like what is, you know, POTUS, you know, uh, yearly, uh, sure. what's it called? Playlist. So Dude, I think a lot like, of, they also like a lot of these politicians, I know it was like Hillary Clinton gets paid like half a mil to go speak at like whatever, like a GE yeah. conference or whatever. Like, She'll pass some law to help them along, and then after she's out of office or whatever, out of like her position, yeah. like get a half a million dollar speaking gig. You know, it's kind of cap. It's it's cash tornado, whatever the fuck it's called, tornado cap. Yeah, I think the concept of skin in the game is such a powerful concept that Nassim makes a good fucking argument that that it should be injected into you know political systems. I don't know how it would. I'm not sure. that sophisticated, but like. You think about, you know, the example of um, sort of Nassim is strictly non-interventionist when it comes to his political stance. I don't know enough to have a very informed opinion, but I know that an argument that he gives is that we live in a time where the military technology, where warfare technology is, is such that there are unintended, unforeseen sort of second and third order consequences that comes from one, the technology to the um sort of the way that the you know bureaucratic decisions can now be made about going to war where someone can sit in a room and decide we're gonna like drone strike this place but they don't have to share any consequence of yep. that decision being made whether it's like one being the soldier fighting in that war or two um like you know if we take out a dictator in some country and then the country fucking falls apart you know my the kids of the you know uh, sure. decision maker are never gonna no the kids of the decision maker yep. never have to be affected by that decision um at least directly yeah. directly yeah most likely yeah. like miss you know it, i think it would be very difficult to ever you know write a law given our current world that if you are a government official who's involved in making decisions about war in order for this decision to be passed you have to um, go live in that country, you know. Sure. Never going to happen. I don't think we need. We just need AGI to come along and like show us. Be like, okay, here are, like the likely paths of each thing, and like our brains aren't good enough at one predicting and two. Like our brains are only good with so like a handful of pieces of information, mm -hmm. and like we need heuristics to like process the world, and like we need AGI to like break things down. And if it could break it down to like somewhat more simple, like decision i feel like we, we could make a lot better decisions. i really like right now what it's you way said. too complicated i really liked what you said last week um about what's it called 
you said that you read that someone floated the idea that the nuclear codes should be like written inside someone's yeah. heart so that for the president to, to be able to, to make that decision, they have to stab someone. Right. You know, that is skin in the game. You know, like that is like that's, that's, you. I, I'm balls deep in the game. <laughs> oh, dude. That's the name of the podcast. Balls deep in the game. Yeah. Really good time. Um, yeah, but you know, it is crazy that people can just make decisions. I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, something that I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of, or I just try to be, try to be careful about is like, look, you read Nassim's books or any, to take any book where you, the author is convincing enough for you to think that they're extremely well thought, uh, well, uh, that the ideas they're talking about are well thought out. Um, I don't want to adopt an idea just because I think that, um, but God damn, it's hard to read Nassim for me and think like he doesn't, like he hasn't thought about all the, you know, sure, sure. possible sort of side effects or just consequences of this idea. But like skin in the game is one of those ideas where like, you know, if we analyze, you know, from the micro to the macro, there's so many ways now how, uh, just on a personal level, you know, you have a desire and we've sort of engineered or technologized a way, a solution where we don't, we can make the decision, get the selfish sort of benefit without, you know, experiencing, you know, even 1% of the risk or deterrent that would have been involved in making that decision, you know, 500 years ago. Sure. You know, I, <clears throat> the thing that I, I, I am on board with skimming game, I think, totally makes sense and I think we'll make better decisions but I also think like any president at that level like or anyone at that level of like influence like any decision you make is going to have an insane amount of like splatter around the decision mm -hmm. like no matter if you make the right decision the wrong decision like yeah it's a butterfly effect to the fucking max like right and I just think like I, I definitely agree skin the game will improve and like generally lead towards better decisions but at that level it's also just like any decision is going to cause well that's mass chaos like, interesting that you say that because one of the sort of implications of skin in the game is to um limit the size of you know governing sort of like the size of governing sure. units and configure them in such a way that we're not removing skin in the game so nasim talks about um you know, having a country where the country is sort of built bottom up instead of top down, which sure. is like, you know, imagine, you know, a governing body of 5,000 people and then how it connects, you know, leading up um, sort of in greater, greater sizes. Um, but I'm not explaining this sort of, it's kind of like a, like a, like a network um, of governing bodies where there wouldn't be, you know, um, a president who is just making some executive order that is going to have all these unintended side effects. Maybe there still is a president, but the president will be, you know, um, properly, you know, at the top of a properly, you know, designed system where, sure. you know, decisions are made. The idea is like fundamentally, what is the, the, the size of a governing unit that doesn't sacrifice skin of the game as a, you know, sure. as sure. a product, because like sure. you think about like skin of the game is easy to have, for anyone listening, what skin in the game means, um, I might get this wrong. So definitely refer to Nassim's book, and obviously you you comment on it as well. But my understanding of the idea is, it is sharing in the consequences of your decisions because that the the consideration of that consequence one allows to make for making better decisions, and two serves the consequence serves as a deterrent that is necessary in making the kind of decisions that otherwise could have extremely um unknown like long-term or sort of long-tailed sure. effects i think i think it also makes for better decision making as well like humans only learn from feedback right like we're, mm -hmm. we're grown-up versions of pavlov's dog right like if you make decisions that don't have good feedback loops like they talk about someone who like He's a baseball pitcher or batter, right? Mm -hmm. They have a lot of feedback, hit, no hit, right? 
right. whereas someone who's like a macro econo- like economist like they make a prediction and then like five years later like things play out and i think skin in the game like you very much learn from your decisions because like right you're not only seeing the decision but like it's directly affecting you and i feel like that's yeah i don't know it, it taps into a more primitive part of, of learning like facts great book that's on the blubhouse reading list 100 percent. should make a blubhouse reading list should the uh while we were we were talking i was thinking of i mean when we spoke about this before like how last week we just talked about one topic and we just like went in one topic but you know covered quite a large area and how like today we're talking like we started talking about tornado cash and now we're ending up talking about skimming the game for political like systems right like david and i were speaking about this and like we were talking about like building this like app and we're like It's interesting that like anything, I don't know how I'm going to articulate this, but like with certain people or ideas, like everything is, anything is a gateway. Like just as like, remember we spoke about like class, how Carol could have taught fucking basket weaving and taught the same class. Like anything Mm -hmm. is an entryway into like teaching something or learning. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And I think, I don't know, I feel like today was a, a, perfect example of that of like talk about anything and it's a gateway to well there's that there's that musashi quote so once you once you and i'm gonna paraphrase because i don't remember the quote exactly but it's like once you know know the way deeply in one thing you can see it in ten thousand things sure um it's it's not exactly that but that's kind of the point of the quote sure sure and uh yeah i 100 percent agree with that um yeah uh i think dante nero who is i think a very wise person who i've talked about with you but i don't know if you know any of his content uh he's he defines wisdom again paraphrasing as um seeing the universality of underlying principles in things that on the surface don't look alike um and i think that's 100 percent the case um and i think that's also like charles charles munger's idea it's like one of the sort of the whole he created this, you know, this meme of of uh, you know mental models where now like everyone who wants to fucking have followers on Twitter mentally jerks off about mental models. But sure. uh, the idea is, you know, read broadly enough uh, into the big ideas that have molded society and molded civilization, so that you understand them and can see them, you know, in 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 see them working. But it also informs your like decision making because it teaches you more and more and more about how the world actually works. Sure, sure. It's like coming full of circle, like I don't know, just sticking to simplicity with with like ideas and like Jim, do the big like compound lifts. Great. Mm-hmm. Reading, if you read like many of the major like big texts, like probably gonna cover most of your bases. Like yeah. It's a fact. It's a fact. Charlie Munger has this quick great, great quote take a simple idea and take it seriously sure it's a fact elite i uh it's more profound than it's it's wild when you like hear something and then things just like click at different levels like Mm -hmm. like oh i understand this and like oh i understand this deeper and like you you'll hear it more times and you like you just understand it deeper levels it's a uh i don't know just a great great experience yeah I was pretty fired up by that video you sent last night of Hormozy. Just uh, yeah. Marco sent me this video about this guy, Alex Hormozy, who pretty big in like the podcast Twitter world now um, as an entrepreneur. Uh, he used to be in the fitness world. Um, and he had a very, very simple framework of how to design your diet, which, you know, I thought was amazing because it's like very foundational. You can add all the fancy shit on top of it, but as a fundamental rule, like, are you trying to lose weight, maintain weight, gain weight? Based on that, figure out how many calories you need. Don't become a nerd about it. Here's an easy way to figure out ballpark how many calories you need. Ballpark is good enough. After that, here are some heuristics about how much protein you need. You know, easy rule, one gram per, you know, pound of body fat. 
Don't overthink it. Don't worry about 0.75 versus 1.25. One gram per pound of body weight. Here's how many grams of protein are in a pound of lean meat. You know, talking 85% lean and up. Um, roughly, roughly is good enough. Um, and then, you know, how many calories are you getting from other shit? That's really it. Yeah, that's like, just it's really it. So simple and like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's like the most healthy holistic diet, but it seems like a very great way. Like at least for putting on muscle and stuff, like great way to stay fit and be good. And like, yeah. I think it is like, like it, it is a very good foundational philosophy because you can add, you know, keto and stuff on top of that. You can add like non-inflammatory sure. foods on top of that. But what is like the thing to solve for, like at the root, like protein and calories, you know? Sure. That's like it. And and I'm not saying that that is actually it. You know, what I'm saying is there will be something that is at the foundational root. And it seems to be for, for, for 99% of people's health goals, which is like weight and feeling good. And that sure. seems to come down to just caloric intake based on your goal and adequate protein. It you seems know? like, I mean, I think he was also like specifying more too, if you want to be like gain muscle versus like, like it was definitely more because remember he said there's this whole like the lifting aspect to it. But yeah. Regardless, like for most people, if it's going to work out regularly, like fire yeah. diet. You know? Yeah. But even if you want to lose weight, but work out for, and lose weight from, from sure. working out, that's also like sure, a good sure. framework. He says like, I think it's just a great, yeah. great. Yeah. But two getting, eating two pounds worth of protein is definitely probably like, like yeah not cheap. but something I mean, on it but also can, i was thinking about it if it's different sources have, though because you could have a, a pound yeah, yeah. of meat of beef in a day which can be doable if you break it down into different meals supplement with a protein shake That's also like have two like protein shakes and yeah and a pound of beef like perfect pound of beef or like half pound of beef like ground turkey shrimp, whatever the fuck yeah whatever like easy so facts uh it's definitely doable it's just like Meal prepping to me is like the key. And it's like you were, I think it's like there are, for me, it's easy to think I've reached like the ultimate optimization. And then like, you'll tell me something, I'll read something and be like, oh shit, there's actually another layer of optimization, you know? Sure, and I think sure. it's so important. Maybe it's not that important, but it's so helpful if your goal, you know, is put on weight, lose muscle. You have to be intentional about your diet. Eating out is not that good unless you're like really controlled about it. Like he, Hormozzi, for example, would eat mad Chipotle, you know, because he was able to calculate, you know, this is how many blah, 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 whatever. Like the macros of that. I just think meal prepping solves for many problems. Yeah, yeah. One of them being you don't have to cook every fucking day. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm actually really happy with my, I know we spoke about this last night, but like my diet right now, I'm like really happy with. I probably eat out like, two times a week yeah save bad money just breakfast at home lunch at home dinner at home most days like and just eating good food that i enjoy eating it's healthy cheap like like it's like for lunch just have a fat thing of greek yogurt with protein in it like probably like 80 grams of protein in it mm -hmm. mad healthy i put like some fruit in there peanut butter like just and like the whole meal is like in new york city is like two dollars which is like mm -hmm. you like a slice of pizza, not like, like right, not half even. a slice of a normal slice of pizza. Exactly. Nice. So like, it's just finding these like half. Yeah. Elite. Fuck. All right, we done an hour, oh. bro. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Um, good chat. That was bad fun. Uh, yeah, that went by. Fuck. I like doing it during the day. Brain, yeah, because yeah, also the lighting is good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're chilling in Westchester for the for the night. All right, let all me right. let me close this recording. Yeah, Much love to all our yeah. fans. We'll see you soon. Much love. Catch Peace. us at Blub out. Blubhouse.com. Peace. Sure. Blub out. Yes, I want to.